All right, Mark and the Buckeyes finally getting a little offense going. It was Indiana. They haven't had the greatest year on defense, but the Buckeyes needed to put some points up. They finally did. Glad to have you with us. College Game Day scoreboard presented by Acura. Trev Alberts, Mark May with me as always. So as we look down the road, and certainly the road is going to get tougher for the Buckeyes, what do the Buckeyes take out of this from their offensive performance against Indiana? Well, I think what they got out of this football game is that they can move the ball offensively through the air and the ground. And I think when you watch this game, you saw the players on the sideline very happy. Craig Krenzel jumping around on the sidelines. This is what their offense needed. They needed to move the ball offensively and put points on the board. Got 35 points today. I think that they are very satisfied in what they've done offensively. Yeah, I think it's funny, too. We always talk about the Big Ten. We're talking about Purdue and Michigan State. It's clearly the two best teams in the Big Ten. I do think that's the case. But you look at this Ohio State team. With this defense, the way they're playing, I don't care if it's Indiana or a high school team, to hold them to about 100 yards of total offense. And Mark mentioned it. Lydell Ross started the game running the football. That's Ohio State running. When they can run, that opens up the passing game. I was very impressed with Ohio State from top to bottom today. Indiana's not quite at the tier of the mid-mix no. in the Big Ten just no. yet. But one of the things we have seen in that conference and some others around the country, the ability to beat each other up. It seems that teams aren't able or aren't quite deep enough or skilled enough to put together week after week after week consistent performances. Now, Wisconsin's had two straight weeks of very emotional games. First, the win over Ohio State, the loss to Purdue. They go into Ryan Field, and they are 25 seconds away right now from being an upset victim at the hands of the Wildcats. And hey, let's not run The Wildcats are about to go to 500, both overall and in the Big Ten, at least keep themselves in the chase. We're trying to become bowl eligible. They've got Purdue coming up next. Reese, I think you hit the nail on the head when you said emotion. And you talk about emotion. This is a game of emotion. It's college football. That's what's so great about college football from week to week. Some teams are at a high, some teams are at a low. It's tough to explain Wisconsin. They lose to UNLV. They defeat the national champions in Ohio State, defending national champions. And then they go out and they lose to a Wisconsin team. But that's what makes college football so interesting. Week in and week out, you just don't know what's going to happen. They, they lost to Northwestern. Uh, remember, Jim Sorge, he didn't play in this game. Matt Shaver did, but Shaver have been the hero of the Ohio yes. State game. It's not as if he hasn't played. You're absolutely right. You mentioned those two games emotionally, but they were also very physical football teams. Now, I think they're just flat out tired. You play Northwestern and you can say to yourself, well, it's just Northwestern. This is a team that spreads you out. Northwestern is a physical football team. Jason Wright runs the ball so well. 250 yards rushing against this Wisconsin defense. I think you're right, guys. I think Wisconsin emotionally is just physically spent after those last two games. And you mentioned 250 yards by far the most rushing that Wisconsin has given up oh, all man. season. Right. This is a defense in the top 20 in the country in rush defense. Northwestern just gashed them. I don't get too far ahead of myself. Purdue and Michigan are going to play, but Northwestern gets Purdue next week. Okay. Purdue will be coming off emotional games again. Wildcats could continue to play spoiler. We have another potential upset brewing down between the hedges. Finally, in the fourth quarter, Georgia has taken a lead over UAB. This could be the classic look-ahead game for the Dogs. They've got Florida coming up. They were already sleepwalking last week against Vanderbilt. Depending on what USC does tonight, the Dogs could lose their position in the Associated Press poll above the Trojans, depending on what SC does against Washington. All of the scores, highlights, reaction. We'll keep an eye on everything. College Game Day scoreboard by, presented by Acura. Rolls on. Why do we work? Why do we get up every day and leave the people we love? At the Principal Financial Group, we know you work for more than just a paycheck. For 120 years, the Principal has helped people keep more of the money they make and do more with the money they save. You work hard. We make work work hard for you. The Principal Financial Group. We understand what you're working for. Join the thousands who've switched to Sonic for a better tasting breakfast. Like our Breakfast Club Toaster Sandwich, made with ham, egg, cheese, tomato, and bacon, and served on thick Texas toast. Drive into Sonic and have a good morning. I've got a question about 1-800-COLLECT. Fire away! Why advertise? <laughs> well, uh... <laughs> it's 1-800-COLLECT as in collect calls, right? Correct! Well, even you could remember that. <laughs> Get me coffee. 1-800-COLLECT. It's obvious. 
Freestyle. NBA Live 2004 with Freestyle. Ready to be for everyone. What do you create? EA Sports. It's in the game. College Game Day Scoreboard. Presented by Acura. Experience the performance today at your local Acura dealer. And in part by the Principal Financial Group. We understand what you're working for. You know, Ryan Field, Northwestern there in Evanston, that's not exactly a snake pit. No. Wildcats hadn't won there all season long. All three of their wins have been on the road, but against Wisconsin, Brett Bazinet finding Jason Wright, top five in the nation in scoring. Cats up 6-0. But here come the Badgers, Dwayne Smith. Look at Dwayne Smith here, good blocking at the point of attack, has the speed to bounce outside, make a couple guys miss, in for the end zone for a touchdown, Wisconsin. And here comes Wright, he tweaked an ankle there, Tangled up in a pile with the Badgers. It's a 9-7 game at this point. Being helped off. He would help later. A little preparation from Randy Walker. You know what? This is a staple in the hip pocket of the Walker playbook. He ran this against Purdue with success a couple of years ago. This time, Noah Heron setting up Jason Wright, who goes in again. The Wildcats defense does a fine job. And perhaps their best defense was that rushing offense that they were able to put on Wisconsin. Right around 250 on the ground against the nation. 20th ranked rush defense, 16-7 on the upset. Beautiful day running the ball for Northwestern. And you said it right, Reese. The key was to keep that Wisconsin offense off the field and dominate the point of attack. That's exactly what Northwestern did in this football. And again, no Sorgi in this game. Wisconsin goes down in second Big Ten loss. Penn State and Iowa. Joe Paterno deadlocked with Bobby Bowden to top the 1A all-time wins list. This is right after Fred Russell TD got called back and Nathan Chandler found the wide open hero back. Yaakov Yisrael, 82 yard pick six and the Nittany Lions. Opportunistic, up seven nothing. This time much better throw from Chandler to Warren Holloway. A wonderful job by Warren Holloway. Look at him extend to get this ball and come down and get a foot and bounds, a wonderful catch. Extra point was blocked, that's a rarity for Nate Kading. Here's Chandler again, this time to Calvin Davis. He had to go down the depth chart, come up with some wide receivers to make plays. Here's Ramona Choa, who's done. You know, when Nathan Chandler has time to sit in the pocket and step forward on his throws, he's a terrific quarterback. Without pressure, he's a good player. Chad Greenway blocks the punt for the Hawkeyes. Jemiah Roberts takes it in. Special teams play again, as we saw a week ago for Iowa, although they had some special teams meltdowns against Ohio State. What's that? That's the Rockettes. Oh, well, you getting, should know you're from Iowa. Getting ready to go do the Christmas I was not a member of the Rockettes. Radio City Music Hall. <laughs> Just over three minutes to go, Iowa seems to have this thing in hand. 26-14, Paterno will remain tied. Bowden can pass him if Florida State is able to beat Wake Forest coming up in just a little while this afternoon. This Minnesota and Illinois, the freshman Lawrence Maroney. Boy, this guy is patient for a young back, makes the play. Assad Abdul Khalid, Aaron Hosack. Well, Aaron's, Aaron's lonely. <laughs> Looking for some friends. Or enemies. Have you seen a quarterback who throws the ball better on the run than this young man right here, Assad Abdul Khalid? You see him here, gets flushed out again on the run. Beautiful throw. Jared Ellerson on the receiving end there. It's a 23-10 game now. Here's a side of Dual Kalik again on the move. Sets up, plants those feet. Ellerson. Boy, that Ellerson has a knack for making big plays. And this freshman running back, sort of taking a page out of the Marion Barber the third book. He's having a knack for finding the end zone. Maroney goes in again. The Gophers, glad that they're not having to deal with one of the Michigan teams. 36-10. Boy, I tell you, just keeps getting worse and worse for Ron Turner. Now one and eight at one win, not against a Division 1A opponent. Okay, Wisconsin really hits a big roadblock against Northwestern. What does this mean for the Big Ten race right now? Counting the Badgers totally out with the second loss? Well, yeah, I think so. I mean, I think when you look at the Big Ten right now, it's such a balanced league, and I think what happens is if you have any weaknesses, teams are good enough now to expose them. So I think the teams that are at the top are teams like a Purdue, and if you stack up to stop the run, they have a quarterback in Kyle Orton and can throw it. If you look at Michigan State, obviously they can run and throw as well. That's the whole key. The reason why Michigan isn't at the top of the Big Ten right now is if you 
been able to shut down their running attack, John Navarre has forced the ball in and thrown turnovers. So I think that's the whole key. The Big Ten, so many good teams, Mark, maybe not a premier team in the league, but Ohio State, once again, if they can get the running game going, they're right back in the thick of it, too. To Minnesota, yeah, where he, he just did, left yeah. the Minnesota defense, they came back, and ever since that point for Michigan, their offense has been gelling. But I think if you look at the Big Ten, and I've really thought about this for a while, it still may come down to the fighting two at the end, the two tough physical teams that are going to be the slobber knockers at the end, Ohio State and Michigan in the final game of the season. That's where the Big Ten will finish. I don't care about Purdue. They've had a great season. You talk about the Wisconsin's and Michigan Whoa. States. Whoa. It will come down you don't care Michigan, about Purdue. Ohio State, because Michigan will beat Ohio State today. I, I would say, oh, you mean more Purdue. Purdue Michigan State, and Purdue yes. play this afternoon. I want to care about Purdue for just a second. As, as, you look, as you look at this game that's going to get underway in just a little while in the big house, you obviously like the Wolverines yes, to I win. Do. Tell me why. What are the keys to the game? Well, because offensively, they can distribute the ball around. You've got a quarterback in John Navarre, Stephen Breston, the wide receiver, and he returns punts. And you've got a running back in Chris Perry. If you look at their offense, they have so many weapons on offense. This is the best offense the Purdue defense will face the entire season, in my opinion. Thus far this season, they did face Bowling Green. Bowling Green defeated that football team and put up over 400 yards offense. We agree, sort of, but I think it's in a different way. It is the key to the game in terms of Michigan's varied offense, but I think that's the story. Purdue's defense. I mean, they hold teams to 66 yards rushing. That's the whole story of the game. When you watch this game in the first quarter, if Purdue is shutting down Chris Perry, they're going to win the football game. If they can't shut down Chris Perry and he's getting five or six yards on first down, yes, John Navarre with play action and those wide receivers, they will kill Purdue. Purdue has to shut down the run. I think they do shut down the run, and then they get those safeties. Stewart, Schweiger coming on the blitz, getting after John Navarre. Purdue is going to win this game. They're the best team right now in terms of the whole team in the Big Ten. I really think that. I think you watch two things in this game. Turnovers. Purdue is plus 12 on the season. Michigan is minus one. And the kicking game. Oh, yeah. Kicking game where Michigan has fallen down in its two losses. Purdue has a history of it, even though they've been a little bit better this year. Doing the Big Ten standings up to the moment. Michigan State sort of sitting back, immune from the upset on the bye week, waiting on Michigan next week. Purdue the only other team in the Big Ten with a zero in that loss column. As for the Spartans and what they have in front of them, well, it's daunting. Yes, That's it is. That's what it is. They've got Michigan coming in in that grudge match that they'll play on the banks of the old Red Cedar next Saturday. Then they go to the shoe. Then they go to Camp Randall. Then it's back home to finish up against Penn State, and we'll see whether the Land Grant here. Trophy game is in fact the one that will decide things. Penn State with the opportunity to be the spoiler. Absolutely, but I think Michigan State is a football team. You know, the thing I like about them and John L. Smith is you've seen this team continue to grow this season. Start of the season, they didn't have the whole offense in. Obviously now Jeff Smoker understands what he wants. And with this spread offense, what they tell their football team is if Jeff Smoker is simply patient and he understands somebody will always be open in the passing game. They have enough guys out in, in pass routes, somebody will open. And then with Jaron Hayes running the football now for this team it's a very difficult team to defend they've thrown it to like 13 different wide receivers slash running backs very difficult to defend and they're never out of a football game because of that offense well they aren't out of a football game but the key is one they've got to protect Jeff Smoker yes they do I think that's key because when he gets pressured this is not a good offense when he's pressured they do like to spread everyone out and to my concern is the Michigan State defense this is a defense that gave up close to 500 yards or over 500 yards to a Minnesota football but team. they shut they down the run to win that yeah they did shut down the run but it opened up the <laughs> I want to broaden our horizons away from the Big Ten just for a moment. You know how we've talked about how different Notre Dame is this year as yeah. opposed to last year? Fighting Irish, just not as opportunistic, just not making plays in the clutch. Against Boston College, they had already come up with a big play in the punting game once and again. Look at him. The Fighting Irish blocking a BC punt. Carlos Campbell scooping and scoring in the fourth quarter. They gave wow. him the touchdown 25-24. But at this moment, under a minute to go, Boston College is on the move. They are deep in Notre Dame territory, at least trying to position itself for the winning field goal. Boston College has had Notre Dame's number the last few years. They won three of the last four. They spoiled their great start last year. We'll certainly keep an eye on it for you, let you know what happens at Chestnut Hill when they finish up between Notre Dame and Boston College. We will continue here on the College Game Day scoreboard presented by Acura. Look ahead to what we have tonight. The afternoon game's just about to get started. Some big ones, including Purdue and Michigan. Mark Trev and I will continue. Stay with us, everybody. 
Tuesday on Playmakers. Homosexuality is unnatural. If you're gay and you play football, you should keep it to yourself. Leaves more ladies for the rest of us. Are you a fairy? Our fan base is not going to support that. You can't hide from who you are. I'm going to make you so happy. You want me to go on the injured reserve? But I'm not injured. I expect you to clear out your locker by morning. Playmakers, the hit series, continues Tuesday, 9 p.m. on ESPN. Preceded by last week's episode at 8. Back on the College Game Day scoreboard presented by Acura. We've already had an upset with Northwestern taking down Wisconsin. UAB, Watson Brown's team going between the hedges and giving Mark Rick's club all at once. Only six minutes and change to go. UAB trying for a landmark figure. Easily the biggest win in Blazer history if they can pull it off. But they are down three. Billy Bennett coming through the offense again for Rick. Dogs have the Gators coming up next week. Iowa State and Nebraska in Lincoln, where they have owned the Cyclones. And, of course, last year, Seneca Wallace and company took care of business against them. Jamal Ward scoring and now opening up the playbook for the Huskers. The diversity of Nebraska's offense here. Isaiah Flewellen just takes the reverse, gets to the outside. Good blocking, good speed, easy touchdown, Nebraska. And Iowa State to punt. This happened a couple of times in the first quarter. Tony Yelp couldn't get that thing out of there. Josh Bullock, who leads the nation with seven interceptions, scooping and scoring on the blocked punt. Bullock, Bullock's family playing a big role in the resurgence of the black shirts. 28 to nothing. Nebraska appears to have Iowa State all covered up. Austin Flynn having a tough time against that black shirt defense. Utah and New Mexico, the urban legends are putting together a great season, roaring in the Mountain West, but Rocky Long has a terrific defense there with the Lobos. They are scoreless. It's still very early in that game. All right, guys, the black shirt defense again, and in Iowa State is a ball club that's been beaten up, got a lot of injuries on that team, not a strong club to begin with. Nebraska just seems to quietly keep sitting there with that one loss. Defense improves. Offense is efficient. Well, it's the same thing as Ohio State playing Indiana. You say to yourself, well, what do we learn in this game? I think what you learn is they come out and play every week, and we look at the black shirt defense. It's so funny. I remember last year everybody talked about how, well, Nebraska has no talent. You know, I mean, they have no speed. I mean, they haven't been able to recruit. Same guys were here last year, suddenly are all of a sudden looking great. Josh Bullock could hardly get on the field last year. Now he's leading the nation in interceptions. Demoria Williams is getting pressure on quarterbacks. It's the coaching. I think Bo Pelini has come in, done a terrific job. He's gotten the players in position to make plays. And once again, Nebraska's defense, first forcing turnovers, getting it done in special teams, Mark. I'm not saying they're going to play for the national championship, but clearly after a 7-7 seven and seven year last year, Nebraska's made tremendous strides. Well, they have made tremendous strides, but I don't think Thank this you. is a good barometer of their improvement. Look at it and this, Ohio State, this, Indiana was? But this Iowa State team is depleted by injuries. They would have gotten a better challenge from their second team offense and defense today. Well, that says but a lot. they have improved. They're 7-1 and one this year. Obviously, they were seven and seven last year and I think Frank Solich made a major decision in the offseason by firing some of his coaching staff and replacing them with other coaches and it did make an improvement in this football team thus far but I want to see later on in the season how this team progresses yes they have progressed Trev but like I said before if they get behind two scores behind any team I want to see if they can throw the football down the field and come back Nebraska win the Big 12 North I mean I, I'm they sorry. do not want to play the, the Big, Big 12, 12 championship game against Oklahoma but neither does anyone else Ooh, for that matter I'm not sure anybody wants a piece of the Sooners right now Colorado is going to get a piece a little bit later on today. Notre Dame, also a team that's been looking for some offense. Against Boston College, these two teams have turned in dramatic finishes before. Last time they're going to meet until 2008. BC fans all pumped up. Quentin Porter looking for a tight end. Dave Cachetta. 26 yards. Boston College up 14-6 at the half. Notre Dame boxed the fate punt. Now Boston College answers Porter to Grant Adams. He's going to weave his way down almost to the goal line. Couple of plays later, Porter on the scramble. I've been impressed with Quentin Porter. I mean, you see him here, nobody's opening, doesn't do something dumb, doesn't force it, takes it in himself and for the touchdown, Boston College. 24 6. Eagles seem to be flying away with this one, but Notre Dame has it to 24 12. The freshman Brady Quinn, Maurice Stovall, and here come the Irish. Wake up the echoes! Shake down the thunder! Block a punt, do something. Carlos Campbell blocker coming up with a block punt, going into the end zone, and the Fighting Irish. Opportunistic, they found a way, Mark. Sandro Scorchino. Good. Probably ball game. Still a few seconds left to go. Say it with conviction. <laughs> well, probably. Probably the ball. You never. It, hey, Yogi taught us it ain't over till it's over. Syracuse and Pittsburgh. 
Panthers also having trouble getting off a punt. Andy Lee bobbles the snap. Steve Gregory walks in. 7 nothing Cuse, but here comes Fitzgerald. Well, what do you do when you need a big play out of the offense, guys? Who do you throw it to? Larry. Number one. He catches the ball. First down, Panthers. That led to a Fitzgerald touchdown catch. Syracuse now up 14-7. You know, we talk a lot about Fitzgerald, but this Chris Wilson, scouts like him, too. Fine tight end, catching it in the middle. We're tied at 14. R.J. Anderson. And can't hook up with Walter Reyes, and Josh Lay pounces on it and scores. Panther defense, the much maligned Panther defense, making a play. Here is Fitzgerald. They throw that will stop right. Why one-on-one -on -one coverage on Larry Fitzgerald? I don't understand that decision. I tell you what, if I'm Rod Rutherford and I look over and I see number one with one guy near him, I will throw to him every, I'll check off every play. 34-14 was the score in that one. Texas Tech in Missouri, we expected a shootout. I mean, a couple of high-level quarterbacks. Here is Brad Smith of the Tigers. And Mizzou showed a little mental, a little fortitude against the Sooners last week, putting a whipping on the Red Raiders early at 17-3. B.J. Simmons picked off by Brandon Barnes. And Mizzou not only showing the offense, showing the defense. Here's Smith with the wheel. Just look at Brad Smith. He goes back to pass. How do you defend this guy? I mean, you're dropping back into your lanes. Next thing you know, here's Brad Smith with the athletic ability to run like this. Sets up Zach Abram here in an easy touchdown. Missouri, when they can run the ball with Zach Abram, very difficult to defend offensively. The 27-10 game. And here comes Smith again. Smith, catch up with it. Left the cameraman behind. Left the Red Raider defense behind. They left 34 to 10 at the half. But, of course, they've got B.J. Simmons. They're coming back. There's still plenty of time. They're down just by 10. Simmons has thrown for 351 yards and four more touchdowns as he continues to put up prolific numbers. Phillip Rivers has thrown three touchdown passes for North Carolina State. And in this game, Rivers passes Chris Winkie as the all-time leader in the ACC in touchdown passes, 28-10. Rivers and the Wolfpack are on top. Now, we've seen a lot of these fine quarterbacks. The Johnny Unitas Golden Arm Award goes to the nation's best senior quarterback. This is a pretty good group. Mm. I believe that Jason White is the consensus leader for the Heisman Trophy, but you know what? He could win the Heisman, not necessarily win the Unitas, although right. certainly I would think that White is probably a favorite in this category right now. A lot of signing right bonus money right there. Well, a lot of guys who are going to earn a check on Sundays, as they say. As you look at that group, who's the best quarterback of the group? I'm not asking who's going to win the Unitas or the Heisman. Who's the best quarterback? The best quarterback of the group is Jason White. I mean, the bottom line, people have talked. I've heard the argument about B.J. Simmons and all the things he does and the yards he's passed for. Well, he also has about three times as many attempts as Jason White. You can measure a quarterback by his pass efficiency rating. And you know what? Jason White is number one in the nation in pass efficiency. You can look at his touchdowns to interceptions. 22 touchdowns, only four interceptions. Jason White, with his ability to hit every spot with every pass, is the best quarterback in the country right now. Well, he's the best quarterback in his system. But in the other system, I think B.J. Simmons, in their throwing system, is the best quarterback in the country. Are it you will saying come that if down... Jason White was in that system, he wouldn't do as well as B.J. Simmons? I think I did say that, and I'll say it again. Okay. I think B.J. Simmons wow. is great for this system, and the reason why is he's so sharp with his passes when he throws the passes. He knows exactly where receivers are going to be, where running backs are going to be. As soon as he steps back in the pocket, he zings the ball. It's gone. He knows this offense. He reads defenses. It's incredible on what he can do when he steps back in the pocket. But here's the key. This award's going to go to the best quarterback in the country. They're going to look at B.J. Simmons' stats. He's going to win the award because he's going to throw for 5,000 plus yards, plain and simple. You I think hope they're you, not you, that dumb. I really hope they that's look what past usually stats. Happens. I, I hope we get. I yeah, hope we're past that in college football. But this award, where we watch this award football is games. called the Johnny Unitas Golden Arm Award, which means if it was just to the best quarterback, it could be a Brad Smith, which is a guy that runs well, and throws. Senior, though. Senior. Yeah, 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 but I'm just saying that type of quarterback right. that can run and throw the ball. But it's not. Every quarterback on that list was a throwing quarterback. Okay, as you look at that list, Mark, and take it to the next step. I know the most important thing right now is to be good in college. Which guy do you see there as the best pro prospect? Is it White? Is it J.P. Lossman? Maybe Eli Manning that we're going to see on ESPN2 tonight? It's going to be Eli Manning. And I think without a doubt, everyone knows it's going to be Eli Manning. One, he's got the pedigree with his father and his brother, Peyton Artie, playing in the NFL. And two, they've been waiting on Eli to come out in the NFL ever since he was a baby. As soon as he got to the football, they said, this is going to be the next superstar. We're waiting on him. The last three years, he's a first-round pick. Mel Kuyper's got him a top-ten pick. Then this year, he's a top-five pick. He's going to be a first-round pick in the NFL. He's got the best upside 
potential out of those I think players. what it is, Reese, is when you get to the next level, I mean, teams look past well, how your defense was. Teams look past things like, and teams won't look past things like knees. And Jason White having the two knee surgeries, that'll obviously be a factor. But Mark's right. You look at players based on what they can do at the next level, not what they did in college. And I think a lot of teams make that mistake. They look at what a guy did in college and say, well, that automatically translates to the NFL, and that doesn't automatically translate. I think I'm a pretty good example of that. <laughs> <laughs> well, it didn't, didn't work out so well, well for you, a little injury situation there. Sorry, Reese. Well, you know what, Jason White, too, with the knee, in some ways it might have enhanced his professional prospects. It's oh, taught yeah. him to Toughness, be a better, yes. a better I, uh, pa a pocket passer. I, well, I think it enhances his prospects because I believe his knees are stronger. And I said this earlier in this year, and everybody kind of looked at me like I lost my mind. Well, I had knee replacement surgery, not knee replacement surgery, but knee replacement do. surgery <laughs> in my knee, the ACL uh, surgery. And he's had them to each knee. And after my surgery, my knee was much stronger. One, because I had to rehab. And two, because the joint was much stronger. When I said his knees would be stronger, I think they are. The way that he's playing now, he runs around the field like there's no problem with his knees. And I think he's got the confidence now that he believes his legs are much stronger. And thankfully, still a lot of college football ahead for Jason White and all of those other guys on the list. And still more ahead here on the College Game Day scoreboard presented by Acura. The next wave of games just about to get underway. We'll keep an eye on Georgia and UAB, let you know if the Blazers are able to pull off a stunner between the heads. Stay with us, everybody. sedan has been before the all-new 270 horsepower Acura TL a higher form of performance Mr. Anderson welcome back it ends tonight Tell him he's going to have the power to destroy this world and if I can't stop him then I fear that tomorrow may never come you get to know me the matrix revolutions uh, 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 starts wednesday november 5th hey boys your kitchen's on fire you realize that don't you? we're doing a 10 10 9 8 7 commercial have you used 10 10 9 8 7 i never get out of the kitchen well you have to start you call anywhere in the united states all of western europe canada three cents a minute 39 cents to connect i really don't make that many calls it doesn't matter you make one call make 100 calls three cents a minute where are you from el salvador el salvador mm -hmm. you call there quite often yeah every weekend 10 10 9 8 7 it's a very cheap rate check the internet you know i used to be a cook whoa whoa oh, you my burned God. my tomatoes oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Vinny wallace wrong direction bro some other time let me tell you something. ESPN NBA basketball. I've lived the 24-7 mode. And I've achieved the ISO motion. I like this, I like that, I like this. Rated everyone. Join the thousands who've switched to Sonic for a better tasting breakfast. Like our breakfast club toaster sandwich made with ham, egg, cheese, tomato, and bacon and served on thick Texas toast. Drive into Sonic and have a good morning. College Game Day Scoreboard, presented by Acura. Experience the performance today at your local Acura dealer. And in part by 1010-987. Give it a try. Rolling down to the ACC on the College Game Day Scoreboard, presented by Acura, North Carolina and Clemson. Eight-point game, under a minute to go. Darian Durant. Darian Durant had scored from 63 out earlier. Gets a great block. Durant going for the end zone. Oh, football on the ground. And the Tigers recover. Wow. Was that huge sigh of relief? I just heard Tommy Bowden exhaling. 36 to 28. Clemson hangs on for dear life. And it is a final from Alumni Stadium. BC beats Notre Dame. 27-25, Scortino with a late field goal. Boston College overcomes a couple of disasters in the punting game to hand the Irish their fifth loss of the season already. Brady Quinn over 300 yards, but not quite enough. More college football coming your way. The showdown from the MAC coming up top of the hour on ESPN2. Northern Illinois and Bowling Green. We've got the SEC on the family of networks tonight. You know, even if you're undefeated, ranked 10th in the BCS standings, you just don't waltz into Doit L. Perry Stadium and oh. stroll out with a victory. 
the Huskies, the Falcons getting ready to do battle. Chris Fowler and the guys are there. A little Mac mania here. The Husky fans blending with the fans of the Bowling Green Falcons. It's a battle for first place in the Mac West coming up at the top of the hour on ESPN2. Meanwhile, about an hour and a half north of here, the Big Ten main story yet to unfold Purdue and Michigan. But Ohio State sneaking by the old Hoosiers there, and they may have discovered a novel concept, something to build on. The forward pass they're using at Ohio State oh, now today. You wouldn't believe it. If you didn't know it was no, Ohio I... State, you would think it was BYU or something. Greg Krenzel, the quarterback from Ohio State, was sensational. He had 15 of his first 19 passes. They look wonderful, running and throwing. Santonio Holmes, watch the name, number four. Kirk Herbstreet's favorite, a guy from Florida. Freshman receiver. <laughs> A player. You know what? A Ohio player. A player. A great future. Redshirt freshman. Ohio State's offense has looked so bad. I, people could say it's Indiana. Who cares? But for Ohio State, with the stretch run that they have with Penn State on the road, Michigan State, Purdue, and then Michigan at the end of the year, it was very important for them before that stretch run to get some confidence going. First half. 20 runs, 20 passes. That balance is what Ohio State will need as they get ready for the yep. stretch run against these better teams. The one surprise so far in the Big Ten, Wisconsin. Just oh, fails no. to show up at Evanston. I mean, you think that Purdue, this was a UNLV type effort for the Badgers. You think the Purdue game, a little bit of a hangover yes, effect? I think so. Took too. a lot out of them. Yep. Awful. Meanwhile, Iowa and Penn State, the Penn State offense continues to, to struggle around there, huh? Yeah, their offense right now, not much imagination, struggling. We were watching that game, and it looked like Iowa just was in control from the get go. Probably could have been even a much larger uh, score for Iowa, but they, Penn State caught a few breaks. In fact, they scored most of their points off of turnovers, but right now, Zach Mills and that yeah. offense, they can't get it going. But don't forget, Iowa's a good football yeah. team, especially in Iowa City. They've won five straight now in Iowa City. The two losses have been away from home. They're good in Iowa City. Let's get to the Huskies and the Falcons. Now, good showcase for some offensive playmakers, some future NFL guys, two very productive offenses that are very different. Northern Illinois, Michael Turner, the running, a big, strong running back, number two in the nation in rushing. He had 100. 156 yards at Alabama, most of them in the second half when they wore down the tide. I think he'll be the key, and particularly if it's raining and the weather like it is right now, Michael Turner could be the difference between these two teams for NIU to win the ball game. The guy's a strong runner. But you yeah. pick Bowling Green. He's like, he likes well, Bowling know, Green. He <laughs> likes Bowling Green this, for the same reason I like Bowling Green. There's, Josh a Harris. There's a revenge factor from last year's game and losing to Northern Illinois, ruined their season, and Josh Harris yep. running and throwing the back the creativity, the athletic ability. Josh Harris wins this game for the Falcons. If that happens, you got to believe Bowling Green could jump way up in the polls and, and also to BCS, but they're not concerned at all about that. The Mac West is all they want. <laughs> hey, guys, back to you. And because of that Mac West situation, Chris, certainly not beyond the realm of possibility that the loser of this game could win out and not be able to get into a bowl game. That's a long way away. A lot of football to be played. We're going to see Michael Turner, who put a buck 92 on this BG defense last year. Yeah, Lee Corso mentioned him, and obviously he's a terrific running back, and they call him Michael the Burner Turner because of his speed. He runs a 4-4, and he might just think, well, here's a young man to give him the ball, and he just sprints through the line. I think you'll watch him. You'll understand why he's so good. It's not just that he's Michael the Burner Turner, that he's fast. He's a very patient running back. If you watch him, he will sit back and wait for the, he'll get the snap, get the ball, and wait for the hole to develop. When the hole develops, then he uses that speed to burst through the hole. The difference between good running backs and great running backs many times is simply patience, waiting for the hole to open up and then hitting it with your speed. And that's what Michael Turner does, Mark. Well, Michael Turner has been getting most of the attention in this game, but I think the best player on the football field is the quarterback from Bowling Green, Josh yeah. Harris. I think what he's been able to accomplish in his career, 38 touchdowns through the air and 37 on the ground, is just amazing. And not only that, he shows up for the big games. He showed up early this year against Purdue, defeated Purdue, which is a top-10 team. And otherwise, he goes against Ohio State later on in the season, a huge game against Ohio State, and almost pulls it out at the end so he's used to the big game atmosphere he's not going to be worried about the big game atmosphere with the cameras and the attention of this game he's just going to go out and play his game and i believe that's why bowling green will win this football game because of the quarterback play of josh harris i think you're right both of these teams are used to big game atmospheres look at northern illinois this year you know yeah they've played they've played some places went down to alabama and won they had uh, maryland coming to their place and but won. in all those games they weren't the big team in the big game that, that, is, that is certainly a fair enough point and josh harris has put up great numbers this year 10th in the country in total offense, 25th in passing efficiency. That game is certainly worth a look. Top of the hour over on ESPN2.
Georgia escapes. Let me tell you how this unfolded. UAB got all the way down to the Georgia 32. Inside three minutes, they took a sack, they took a penalty, turned it over on downs. Mark Rick said he wanted his team focused on the Blazers. I can't believe he got that on this day, but, but, it's a W, they advance, they get Florida coming up next. So Georgia is able to maintain its place. We're going to turn our attention tonight to the SEC West, the showdown on the Bayou between two breeds of Tigers, the Bayou Bengals from LSU, Auburn, which has turned its season around. You know what? There's some bad blood in this thing. Tommy Tuberville tried to extend an olive branch a couple years ago, taking a knee after there have been really some back-and-forth thing among the fans. How do you see this thing unfolding tonight? Well, at the end of this game, if Auburn's up by two touchdowns and they're on the one-yard line, they will not take a knee. They will be I don't know. The end they might not get out of Tiger <laughs> Stadium if they don't. They don't like him very much. <laughs> well, I think the key of this game is going to be one up front, and obviously I usually say that, but in this game specifically, because usually. if you look at LSU, they're the number one rush defense in the land. They only give up 53 yards a game. If you look at Auburn, they're led by their running attack of Brandon Jacobs over 180 yards last week and Carnell Cadillac Williams. Six touchdowns. That's right. Six touchdowns last week against Mississippi State. That's where the game's going to be won and lost. The trench is up front. You're absolutely right. You know, we focused a lot on Auburn, their running game, Jason Campbell. But I think you have to look a little bit Auburn, their resurgence, the reason also why they've won five games in a row. Is their defense has been terrific. We overlook. We keep talking about the Cadillac and parking it in the garage and all that. And we forget about Don Terrius Thomas and Carlos Dansby, two of the best linebackers you're going to see in the SEC. I think the whole key to this game is Matt Mock, the quarterback at LSU. If they shut down that running game of LSU, which I think they'll be able to do, Matt Mock facing pressure. That's the whole story of the game. If they get pressure on him, I think Auburn's playing better than anybody else right now in the SEC. I think Auburn gets it done. LSU's offensive line played its best game of the season yes, last week against South Carolina. Had an emergence of a freshman running back and Ali Broussard that we will see tonight at 745 Eastern Time. Game we saw earlier this afternoon, Ohio State. Ohio State, the 114th ranked team in total offense. The three teams ranked below them, a combined 1 and 22 on the season. Mm. Trestle flat out there. Have to get better on offense if we're going to meet our goals. Against Indiana, Lydell Ross. I know the Hoosiers weren't great, but we haven't seen the Buckeyes do this in a long time. Reese, if you want to get healthy in the running game, what better team to run against than Indiana? Here's Lydell Ross going up the middle again. Bang, right in the end zone. And then once you can do that, you establish the run. You're Craig Krenzel. Your little play action. Sit there in the pocket. And what do you do? Throw up top. Here's Drew Carter right over the middle. Beautiful catch, beautiful throw by Craig Krenzel. And Drew Carter was hurt later in this game. Didn't look good in the situation. That would be a blow to the Buckeye offense. Ross punching in a touchdown. And then Ross opening it up. And Krenzel spreading it around the fullback. Big Brandon Joe taking names. Getting people with him. Then send Tonio Holmes with the catch. Playmaker on the edge for the Buckeyes. Ohio State cruising 330 yards of total offense in the first half, more than they averaged for the game. Now Scott McMullen in there finding Holmes again. Indiana kept it from being a shutout. That was about the end of the good news for the Hoosiers, 35 to 6. But what's most important out of this game, look at the total yards by the offensive Ohio State. I know it's Indiana, but 624 yards. That's got to make Jim Trestle feel happy about his offense tonight. Well, Jim trestle has got Penn State coming up next, and he had a moment to reflect on this one first. Looking at your kids on the sideline and how they react to other, this seems like an unbelievably close football team, and that showed on the field today. How do they keep that camaraderie? Well, you know, that there's a lot of expectations for the kids here, and uh, they care about each other a lot, and they play hard for one another, and, and uh, when a guy like Drew Carter gets hurt, that really affects the whole group. It's a close bunch. So you had some young kids step up today and a breakout game for Lydell Ross. How do you assess his performance? Well, I think Lydell did a good job, and, and, you know, he needs to keep getting better. If we want to have a chance to contend in this conference, we better, better be able to run and pass. I know you guys got the loss early in conference play, but how are you keeping the kids focused that there's a lot of Big Ten football left? I think they know that. They know how tough this league is. All right. Thanks very much, Coach. Thank you. They have navigated October, and they head toward November. Destiny firmly in their control, but, boy, big big, big hills to climb on that schedule. Yeah, but Ohio State controls its own destiny. And so many times in terms of the Big Ten Conference, and so many times when you're looking at a team who could potentially win a conference, Ohio State's been there. They've been in big games. They know how to win close games. Because of their defense, they will be in every game. I don't care who they play, what offense it is, their defense is that good. If they can do what they did today, establish a running game in the first quarter, a very difficult offense to stop. That's the whole key. It's been the key with them this year. It'll be the key of them last year for the next five years if they 
they can't run the ball in the first quarter, they're not very good on offense. They did today, Mark. Ohio State quarterback Craig Krenzel was jubilant on the sidelines during the game when Scott McMullen came in the game and he was done for the day. But the happiest players on this football team, the defense. This is the first game where they could sit back and say, you know, we can kick back. The offense finally scored. They're running the football. They're putting points on the scoreboard. The defense for Ohio State is probably the happiest right now. Can make you feel a little bit friskier. It yeah. can if you know you've got a little bit of a margin for error. Buckeyes haven't had that lately. Throughout the course of the year, Tiger Woods hasn't necessarily had a lot of margin for error, but he's still in the hunt later of the year, and he's going to come your way top of the hour. As we turn our attention to golf, we have football on ESPN2, golf in just a few moments. More scores and highlights coming after this. The wait is over. Will the reality live up to the hype? For LeBron James, the NBA on ESPN returns with a Wednesday doubleheader. Magic Mix at 8, Cavaliers-Kings at 10.30, Wednesday.